welcome back to another episode of uh, Ish My Psychic Says. It's been a while. It's been a long while. Well, we keep having complications with technology and Sam's schedule. Basically, both and Mercury retrograde was kicking uh, complete ass. Not just Mercury. There's like six planets until November. Exactly. But Mercury retrograde just ended, mm, which yeah, is great. That's true. So the Five. tech. Yeah. So but the technology part should not be a problem anymore because of what I was told with Mercury retrograde is that a lot of times technology gets affected oh, a yeah. lot. Oh yeah. So hopefully <laughs> let me tell y'all we record this episode. This is our third time. Third time <laughs> recording this episode. We got to be transparent and we're hoping that this one actually goes through. <laughs> I'm time. pretty sure it will. <laughs> okay. We're frustrated enough. <laughs> right. Exactly. We don't have no more time to be playing around. Um, but a couple of weeks ago, I, I celebrated my birthday and Sam bought me some gifts and I'm so excited. She actually bought me made them. Oh, well, she made me gifts, which makes me even more excited. And she brought me an on-air sign. I don't, it's over there in the corner right now. I'm not going to hang it up here because, yeah. Um, I'm going to hang it up when I get my new little content space. But my gifts that she made me, I got them right here. And I wanted to show you guys before we got started on our episode here. Okay, let me go ahead and look it. Okay. First of all, I'm about to save this paper because look at that. That's pretty. Ain't that pretty? I'm going to save that for my mama. <laughs> Oh, that's pretty. Okay, so here we go. All right. Make sure to hear the, the <laughs> ASMR. Okay. <laughs> All right. So first gift. Ooh. Okay. So pheromone. She's trying to get me pregnant by next year. That's what she's trying <laughs> you to do. Smell it. Let me see. Let me see what it smells like. Okay. I swear, after you take a shower, you just put it on your body. Well, I don't want to put it on here because I'm going to attract the wrong man. Smells so good. So clean. So yes. light. She has a whole store, guys. A live store that she does how many times a week? Um, Once or twice. A week? Lately, I'm trying to move, so it's really hard for me to... And we'll, we'll get into all that. Yeah. But she has a live store that you guys should definitely, you know, it's be a part of. She's Fair on mom. my screen. <laughs> yeah, so I can get, get that man. Okay, so next gift is... What I just say? <laughs> Help me get a man. <laughs> Focus, love, energy. She got me a nice little candle here. Mm. So what's in this candle? You can open it. It's a plastic. No, I won't open it yet. Oh, okay. You just take it off. Yeah. I think I can. You can poke a hole in it. That way you don't have to take the whole plastic off yet. Well, it's too late now. I've already started the process. <laughs> Look at it. Hold on. Okay. We don't want to mess it up. We just want to poke the hole. What it smell like? Ah, oh, my camera shot. It's okay. We'll come back. It's a witchcraft candle. <laughs> tells you all about it in the front, and then on the back, it tells you the importance of seven day candles. Also, okay. So you burn this for seven days. You can burn it while you're around. You can snuff it out if you gotta leave. Oh, okay. So I got candles. Come on, shot. Come back, shot. There we go. All right, and then the last gift. Ooh, it's soft. Make sure it's, it's the seam is fragile. Okay. Then you're an overthinker. I gave you some amethyst. Well, let me definitely put this on every day. Magic. Ooh, used to cleanse and purify the aura. Moving any yep. negative attachments or energies. We got to stop bringing home gifts of energy. Listen, gifts, people, things. You'll probably like the way that smells too. Oh, well, I'm excited to use all of these. She gave me a, a roller. Move the roller so you can and put oil on it. Ah. This on right now. Negative energies go away. There we go. Put that on. No, we're going to put this on now. Yeah, all over. <laughs> all over. Got love she, all over me. On her, no longer thinking about no ex. <laughs> Look at her liberated. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Was far liberated. Now I'm even more. Ooh. Okay. No more negative energies. I have one roller oil. It's called F That Guy. Ooh, I need that. And it's... Feminine empowerment. 
I need, you need to send me that one. That is. It smells like perfume. It yeah. makes all the guys actually want to talk to you. It's funny. Oh my god, that would be it. <laughs> you always put something that's supposed to get away that the fuck boys. You always end up attracting them. Maybe I don't need that. Then. So we have notes because we tried to do this episode um, mm-hmm. several times. Yeah, and we're talking about dreams. Yes. So we're talking about dreams, dreams, um, interpretations, um, how they affect your psyche, your sleep cycle. The reason why I wanted to talk about this is because me personally, I either I don't dream at all or I either have dreams about the same couple of things. Yeah, it's like repetitive. Yeah. Work, career stuff, love or and some other bull crap. So in order to dive into dreams we have yeah. to understand why we dream or the process of dreaming right because mm-hmm. dreaming is a complex phenomena that scientists have tried to figure out for years and years and years like why do people dream like what's the point of it right right exactly if i could psychically look into the reason why we dream it has a lot to do with because we're so distracted in life mm-hmm. and that is our most vulnerable state And in our vulnerability, we're able to navigate situations and paths in our life that we're really not paying attention to while Mm -hmm. we're so distracted by life. Right. Distracted by jobs, relationships, situationships. We're distracted. By bullshit. That's what we're distracted by. (laughs) So psychologists and scientists have studied dreaming for many years. And they don't really know why fully, like, we have this whole other life in the subconscious. Mm -hmm. Um, They have little theories, though. They, They know that dreaming helps with, like, cognitive processing. They help with uh, processing information, emotions from your day-to-day life because we all have like urban stress. We all have stress factors. Right. And so sometimes like your dreams will navigate those stress factors with the craziest dream ever. Right. Like you're falling off a cliff or you're falling down or you're running away from something. And Mm -hmm. they all have like these weird meanings towards like, why did I dream of a zombie horde chasing me? I think that's a common one. Right. So if you if you really think about it, breaking down dreams is understanding symbolism. It's understanding like what means what in what scenario. Okay, I get what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. Like dream not themes, but like a message. Yeah. Okay. So because we're so busy in our day to day life, um, I'm gonna tell you like psychologists and science scientists study it, they say cognitive processing memory consolidation, emotional regulation, psychological function, such mm-hmm. as REM sleep when most dreaming occurs. And a lot of people who have shallow sleep syndrome, yeah. they will never feel like they do dream because they never get to the REM state. Yeah. And so if you have a sleep disorder, yeah, it's possible that you're not dreaming if you're never able to slip fully into REM. And when you do full, like fully slip into REM, mm-hmm. then you're just catching up on that restful sleep. So it's really hard. Yeah. That's why some people wake up and they're like, I know I dreamt something, but I don't remember. That's been me more mm-hmm. than enough times. Or like I said, I just don't even have dreams at all. I don't get into that REM sleep cycle. Yeah. And so you're probably a shallow sleeper. Yeah. So if anything wakes and triggers and uh, traumas, if you have a childhood traumas or even triggers um, that will not allow you to get into REM, mm-hmm. you can also work that out in shadow work. We've been talking about that too. Oh yeah, she has a shadow work class going on, guys. I you- do. It's like a 10-week course. I will be selling the webinar on my website once I'm done doing this case study with these people. Okay. So people could do it at their own pace. Right. Um, so there's also evolutionally evolutionary perspective. Some theories propose that dreaming may have evolutionary advantage allowing our ancestors to rehearse responses Mm -hmm. or threats um letting us know what's going on well that's like more of a spiritual way of looking at it is people in spirituality think well your dreams are trying to tell you something that your conscious mind is not allowing the subconscious mind to tell you that's what i always thought to myself Mm -hmm. anytime i dream about something obviously it's not literal but when you have certain things or certain Mm -hmm. things that poke out in that obviously it's something that's trying to tell you but you you're not sure what it what it is one thing that gets on my nerves about those type of dreams though is that you hope they come back so you can understand them more and they kind of just they're gone you can (laughs) it's like you hopefully you remember it enough so that you can figure it out but nine times out of ten that dream could have been very meaningful, but 
it's gone. You, right. you know, I've had those issues a lot. Repetitive dreams are annoying because that's your subconscious telling you, hey, these are the things that are really bothering you. Right. It's like the nag, right? Mm-hmm. I think most common, if we're looking into dreams, um, the zombie apocalypse dream is a very common dream, and people are always worried that it's their uh, third eye or their psychic energy warning them of doomsday. Mm. A lot of people are so... You know, yeah. <laughs> we're going to have the zombie apocalypse. Like we're kind of in the midst of it with technology. Like everyone's a zombie with technology. That is true. But what does that even mean? Because like a common dream is like I was running away from people. I was running away from zombies. It's a very common dream. Mm-hmm. If you really look at it, it's like you are one person in your life. Every zombie chasing you, every herd of people chasing you, people chasing you in general, it means that you're feeling overwhelmed by a group or a collective energy that isn't allowing you to actually focus on you. So you're drained, emotionally drained, physically drained, energetically drained by either work or family or people around you. Right. So if you think about that dream of being chased, Uh uh-huh. It's like the energy. You can't catch a break. You can't get away from your responsibilities. Wow. You feel drained by them because a zombie is a living dead, right? Right, yeah. So if you break that down, if that means that the living dead is following me, it means that I have an energetic vampire, someone who's using me for mm-hmm. um, a gain for themselves right. and leaving me depleted. A mm-hmm. zombie is depleted. So they only come after you to eat, right? Right. <laughs> So it's like that metaphor of you have some leeches. <laughs> right. I've never had the zombie dream. The dreams that I've had, I, I told you this. We talked about this on air and I had to cut it off because everybody don't need to know everything about me. But the one dream that I have had that has really stuck out to me um, was that I was out with a guy. Mm-hmm. Didn't see his face. Didn't know he was. And we went to an event and suddenly he took me to a room And it was a big, huge, empty room, closed the door, and left me there. And I was freaking out in every which way. Well, what does that dream mean? That dream means that you've never been able to rely on a single soul in your life. That means every person, and it goes back to childhood, masculine energy. It means that every relationship has led you to emptiness. Jesus. Deep. That is deep because, woo, because honestly, I have felt that way. I think I've had to always fight for someone to be there for me or believe in me. Yeah, if you're not making it work, it just ain't going to work. Right. Yeah, and so being led to a room, think about it. Another common dream is people will come to me and say, I dreamt of a house. The house was this, this, or that, or it was complex and I couldn't get out. It was like escape room. Um, It was messed up or it was really withered away and antique looking, very old. Well, dreams of a house indicate you because you're your house. Mm. And so if your house looked tore up and ghetto, (laughs) it's because you're not doing any TLC. You're not taking care of your physical health, your mental health, your emotion health. Right. So if you look on the outside of the house and it's messed up, that means that your physical view of yourself is shattered or broken. Mm -hmm. If you go and you get stuck in rooms, this means that you can be an overthinker that gets stuck on situations or stuck in the past or stuck on a scenario. Yeah. If the inside of the house is a mess, it means that you're emotional self or your mental self is not in a well space Wow, houses represent you that makes a lot of sense because you have to take care of your Mm -hmm. yourself like you would take care of your own home so you getting led to a room and trapped in that room means that you always are unfulfilled and unsatisfied in your relationships with masculine energy because they don't do anything to build you they keep you stuck or stagnated Or they leave you in a space by yourself. So (laughs) she's like, I don't want to do this no more. Next question. (laughs) Not even that is everything that you're saying is how I physically have felt. Mm -hmm. So it makes so much sense that you're saying that to me. I'm just I'm blown away because I what I've been feeling is I'm not crazy. No. And I think that's the biggest thing. I don't think humans are crazy. I think that they just lack validation and self-trust. Yeah, because we're, I guess in a way, we've all been taught to not, like, be 
so self centered. I don't know if that's the right yeah, word. To be more caring and compassionate for right. those around you. And not really care for yourself. Yeah. Well, I mean, how, you know, that's that's kind of like an oxymoron in a weird way because common sense is like, why wouldn't you take care of yourself? Yeah. But if you're not taught something, how do you know? Mm-hmm. And so we are all kind of raised in this melting pot of none of us know what we're doing. Exactly. None that's, of us. <laughs> that's why it'd be killing me when um, our parents used to say, wait till you grow up and da 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 To only find out when, when we became adults that our parents were like, holding on by the the ends of their tippy toes trying to get by and survive life because they right. also didn't know either they they're, they're not as open with their feelings and emotions right. and and things of, of that nature as we are as millennials right. like trying to figure out dream interpretations understanding what our horoscope signs mean or who we match with or any of that stuff if we have dreams we're trying to figure out what does it mean because why the hell would i have this dream and I don't, I don't understand it. Right. So there's like strategies that you can use to figure out and navigate that. Mm -hmm. They always say that creating your own symbolism is, um, really beneficial Mm -hmm. to dream interpretation because any person can then interpret a dream if they make symbols mean something to them. So like, what does a wolf mean to you? What does a wolf mean to me? What does a bird mean to you? What color is the bird? So when I tell people to navigate into dream interpretation, Mm -hmm. it's, creating a journal that allows you to write down your dream and then take it apart. Right. And look at every little detail. Like, why did I color? Why did I color green on the paper in my dream? And then it got torn out and thrown out into the wind. (laughs) It's like, okay, well, how are you, how are you processing your finances? Like, what are you doing with your finances? Are you just throwing things out the window? Are you just like spending, (laughs) you know, there's symbolisms turn into meanings. So if you create your own symbolisms, then they will ring true to you when you're interpreting your own dream. So creating a journal would be like, okay, you woke up, you had this crazy dream, but you're too tired to journal it. Guess what? You have this beautiful thing called a cell phone Mm -hmm. and little notes. And you can talk into the notes and say, it's three o'clock in the morning and I dreamt blah, blah, blah. And this <laughs> happened. And that person was there and this happened and then go back to sleep. If you wake up out your sleep. Yeah. Um, sometimes we do because we'll, we'll wake up in the middle of a dream sometimes. And that's like the best time to get your notes and just pour it out. Yeah. Because as you are awake more and more, you're going to disconnect from mm-hmm. that symbolism or you're going to disconnect from some of the little details that you need for that dream. Yeah. So if if you do wake up, you should probably do some notes in your phone and then the next day, write it all out so that it makes sense and try to make sense of your half awake Mm -hmm. note. (laughs) And then on another page, write down things that stuck out to you the most. And you can even, you can research, you can use spiritual meaning of an owl, spiritual meaning of a wolf, spiritual meaning of the color green. Yeah. You can look those things up to help you as a cheat sheet to, you know, come up with some type of symbolism, but navigating your dreams is definitely going to help you improve with your intuition mm-hmm. and your connection with self. Because then as you dream and you interpret it, interpret it, interpret it, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> as you interpret it you're going to feel more connected to yourself. The okay. crazier the dream, the less you're connected to yourself. Got you. What about people that tend to not dream at all? Like, I think the majority of the time when I'm sleeping, I, we are discussing this right now, shallow sleeper, I don't dream. Right. Or if I'm in a deep sleep. You don't remember them. I don't remember them or it's just like black. Right. Okay. So there's there's several things. Number one, it could be like dietary stuff. You're not, if you're eating a lot of sugar, you're going to promote more nightmares. I don't know why, but that's a thing. That's why they say for kids, don't give them sugar Mm -hmm. like past a certain time because night terrors, sleepwalking and nightmares happen with that. Yeah. Um, If you're a person who's like, you know what? I just never dream. It could be that you have too much stress going on in your walking life that Mm -hmm. you just can't disconnect right you're not knowing how to ground your energy or disconnect from energy you could have a sleep condition or you have like traumas and anxieties that is not allowing you to feel safe enough to be vulnerable wow so there's multiple things but studies show that if you are sleeping and you are getting to REM there is no way that you're not dreaming so if you're like a shallow sleeper, mm-hmm. yeah, you're not going to dream because you're not getting to that stage. That's yeah. a sleep condition. If if your diet and your 
daily urban stress is chaotic, then you're not allowing yourself to disconnect fully to get to that sleep stage. Right. If you have so much going on, you're just overwhelmed, but you're exhausted. Usually people that are not able to get into a healthy sleep state are always exhausted. Damn, Sam. She always calling me out. Message. (laughs) The message is there. So basically, I got a lot of stress, a lot of issues. I think a lot of us do. Yeah. Because I feel that I only dream if necessary because I don't dream every night. Okay. I don't. I, don't I think I think for the common folk, everybody, we all can say, okay, I've had some really crazy dreams, but there's mm-hmm. times when I don't remember them and there's times when I don't feel like I am. Right. Now, I know that I don't dream all the time because I do have PTSD. I have shallow sleep syndrome because of PTSD. Okay. Um, it's not like an actual sleep condition, but... Stress and trauma can create sleep conditions. Right. So I can never feel comfortable to fully drift off because I always feel like, and then who's going to come in the door or what's going to happen. But that's from PTSD. But Mm. um, a lot of times as a psychic, just because you're psychic doesn't mean that your dreams are going to make sense either. Like sometimes I will have off the wall dreams, Mm. but because I do symbolism and I do dream interpretation, I'm like, Oh, it means blah, blah, blah. Mm. Or people commonly women, mostly women sometimes. Cause I've had a few run-ins with men who tell me about this, but it's mainly women where they will hit me up and they'll say, I can't stop dreaming about an ex. That's been me. Mm-hmm. I, I, for a good chunk of while, I could not stop dreaming about my last ex. Right. And so there's two sides of that. For me, if I dream of an ex, it's usually because I'm going to either run into them or hear from them. If, uh, and that's because of psychic prediction. Like yeah. my mind is predicting something for myself. Right. Um, every time I have dreamt of someone from my past, usually I have a run in with them in mm-hmm. the next two weeks. Mm-hmm. So I also know like the time frame of that. I haven't had a dream about an ex in a long time. Um, But like for the most common, people will dream about someone from their past or an ex. And it's your mind of number one, there's something about the situation that still doesn't sit right and you don't have the proper closure. Mm -hmm. Number two, there's something about that person's personality that rubs you wrong to this day. Something that you're trying to remind yourself to never get involved in again. The red flags are being shown to you again in a different version. Yeah. Number three, you don't know how to practice because self-compassion forgiveness, therefore you're holding on to old energy. Number four, <laughs> they're thinking about you. So it could be complex. And it, it just really depends on everything that happens in those dreams. Mm-hmm. So yes, a person will come and say, oh my God, Sam, I dreamt of my ex. I haven't heard from this person in three years. Um, this is what happened and that's what happened. And they were driving a car and they were going down this street and they were doing these things. And they're like, "Does what does that mean? Right? Yeah. And I have to sit there and say, okay, and Were you watching or were you in the dream? Because there's so many things that you have to look at when navigating a dream. Because if you're Mm. watching it from, like if you're just watching it, but you're not a part of the dream, but you're watching it, that usually means that you're getting a snippet or you're getting a view of their mental state, what's going on with them. Like psychically, you're being shown a connection of, hey, this person's in this type of a part of his life. Right. If you're in the dream, it has a lot to do with your energy holding a grudge mm. or being caught into it. Usually if you're not in the dream, it's you're being shown something psychically with them. You're being shown something in their life or they could be thinking about you because you're being brought to the energy. You're not in the energy. Right. If you're in the energy, it's usually something that you haven't fully healed from or let go. Dang, that is very complex. Because for me, I've had dreams with my ex where I'm actually watching him from the dream. I'm mm-hmm. not in it. and But I've also had dreams where I'm actually in the dream and I'm with him. Or we've been intimate in the dream of mm-hmm. that sort. And I'm like, I don't want to be with this man. Yeah. So like if him. you're dreaming yourself in the dream with your ex, it's usually because you haven't really let go. There's something still bothering you about Mm. that. You haven't fully given yourself closure. You just bottled it off and it's like surfacing again. Yeah. If you're not in the dream, it's usually because they're thinking about you or they're wanting to like have some type of connection with you Mm. or you're being shown something important that's going on in their path. Mm. Well, the good thing is I ain't dreamt about that man in a while now. 
I think the last time was right around my birthday or before my birthday. Because usually, I don't know what it is, some type of connection happens. And I'm not saying we literally connect, but somehow he always finds a way to connect to me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Usually around that time of the year. But I feel that you you have finally severed a lot of ties with the energy like you fully because you had to process it yeah and it took you a minute but i think you did it right because you didn't just like hold it in yeah you let it all out now another common dream that people will have is like the falling dream mm-hmm. where they kind of drift off and then they feel like they've just been like shot back into their body and then there's stuff on social media that's like that was when your soul got jolted back into your body because you were gonna die like what, what? who made that up who made that story <laughs> that's some bull crap right so what does that even mean right the falling What does the falling mean? Because like in a dream, it feels so real. Yeah. Like you're falling off of a cliff or you're falling down or you're falling out of the sky. Like navigating what the falling means is something that you're definitely trying to jump into without a thought. Mm. Because if you think about the falling, like when you're on a roller coaster, it's just, it just falls. So it could, it could talk about like the fear of taking a risk a fear of something that you feel may be a failure. Mm. So falling, falling is complex. Um, another common dream is sexual dreams with people. Yeah. I, had those. Yeah. I have women reaching out all the time, like weird stuff too. Uh, one of my customers had told me that she had a dream that she was intimate with her female boss and she's married to a man and she didn't know what it meant. And it was really confusing to her. Wow. She does not have a sexual preference of feminine she's married to a masculine and she's right. happy in her marriage but what do those dreams mean yeah i want right? to know so dreaming of someone in an intimate space represents your vulnerability to that person or the way that you view yourself next to that person so if there is like for instance that dream where she had um some type of intimacy with a boss that was female Mm -hmm. it it talks about how she really wants that type of a life like she wants to be empower herself she wants to exude the confidence she Mm. she's lacking maybe power or confidence in herself and that's why the dream is trying to bond her energy to someone that she wants to be like wow she doesn't have issues with that boss she likes that boss a lot Uh uh-huh so it was weird for her to have that dream and i'm like no it doesn't mean that you are a lesbian now and you want your (laughs) boss and you're gonna leave your husband like it doesn't mean that at all it means that you're really striving to impress this other person in ways that you're trying to show some type of an energy such as confidence or um eloquence or even courage and sometimes they will show in a sexual dream where it's like there is a good connection here it's Mm -hmm. a fiery connection but it's like hey you need to chill (laughs) you need to chill (laughs) calm down calm down and i will have a lot of people reach out to me who they're with their significant other and they have those sexual dreams of someone from their past or someone that they don't know. Mm -hmm. Usually sexual dreams, they mean definitely that you have passion in some part of your life or that it's going to show you what you're lacking. Right. Yeah. Another common dream is cheating. Uh, Women will hit me up all the time and say, I dreamt that my husband was cheating on me Mm. or even men, men will even reach out to me and say, Hey, I dreamt of my girlfriend cheating on me with my best friend. Um, Cheating doesn't really mean that your person's cheating unless that you are doing prophetic dreams. Prophetic dreams are kind of what psychics will do when people are more advanced in the intuitive right. energy or the psychic energy. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I will have dreams of people and then I'll run into them. Like yeah. I'll dream of like a woman that I saw three years ago and the next thing you know, I see them at the grocery store the next day. Wow. So like prophetic dreaming is different. Um, your intuition will always kind of show you stuff. Cause what happens when you don't feel like you're very intuitive and then you dream that your partner's cheating and then they are like, what does that mean? Right? Yeah. Well, Usually cheating dreams indicate vulnerability. It means that you are lacking something in that partnership. Maybe you and your partner are communicating well. Maybe there's some type of weird strain between the two of you. Why are you dreaming of them? It's like, well, I dreamt of my partner cheating. 
Does that mean that they're cheating? No, it doesn't always mean that. Prophetically, you can pick up on it, but then there's more there's more telltale signs in the daily life with them. Like they're acting funny, they're not showing up on time, they're doing weird stuff, mm -hmm. and then you're dreaming of them cheating because your energy is telling you, hey, this could be the issue. But if they're really not doing anything to promote that energy and you're mm -hmm. dreaming of them cheating, yeah. it usually means that you feel inadequate in the relationship in some way right. or you're afraid to ask for something. I definitely will say, not the last one, but the ex I had in college, I dreamt a lot of him cheating on me only to find out that he was. Because your intuition was like showing you, but in day-to-day day -day life, it was probably like little signs too. It was little signs and I mm -hmm. continued to ignore them. Also, I was also 21. We, you know, we <laughs> all have ignored those telltale signs. Yeah. Because genuinely we want to give people the benefit of the doubt exactly and especially that's exactly when we know like hey well, i'm not perfect right but, or you kind of recognize it as well i have trauma there like is it the trauma or is it because it's something mm. and a lot of women are like i just don't want to come off crazy it, that's the biggest thing is that you don't want to come off crazy right but usually i've always learned that if your intuition is nagging at you telling you something it's usually because it's something there it is it's something is there but it's like a, i said you'd have to have a lot of signs in the day-to-day -day life right. to line up with those dreams in right. order for you to dictate if they're prophetic or just in your mind yeah. somebody's gonna show you energy like if someone is cheating on you if someone is cheating something out of you your day-to-day -day life with them will have little signs. It'll show. It'll show in different ways. I do think once it's nagging at you, it'll show up in your dreams. Oh, yeah. Too. Guaranteed. That's the way of really telling you, like, hey, what you're thinking is not crazy. Right. Because I had to learn that. Because at first, I was like, no, my man would never cheat on me. Then I went in his phone, not on purpose. Well, on purpose, but not for the main purpose of seeing if he was cheating on me. He, I was going in there to delete some photos I didn't want him to have of me. Right. I found photos of the other girl in there. <laughs> so yeah. that joke bothered me for so long. But you know what? I also had, like I said, I had dreams of him doing that. Yeah. And so I think in the back of my mind, I knew, but I ignored it because I didn't want to sound like I was crazy. Right. And I feel that that's a common thing for women. Yeah. Because women are emotional creatures. Yeah, so we, we don't really rationalize or like logically look through it we just feel it we just go off of a feeling a lot of times and that's why a lot of us get thrown in jail <laughs> because we instead of looking at it in a logical way of like what could this possibly mean do right? i have all the signs to back it up it's like no he thought he could and i'm gonna show him that he can that's that's usually what happens and then you're calling your psychic saying um i'm in jail now so cheating dreams is a common dream but it doesn't mean that your partner is cheating it usually means that you feel like you're lacking something such as communication, intimacy, vulnerability. There's something lacking. Maybe their schedule changed and they don't have a lot of time for you. Boom, you have a cheating dream. It's because your trauma is telling you that you're losing a connection with them and it's showing you a fear that you have. So wow. it's complex. They're very complex. It just depends on, okay, what's going on in your life and how do those dreams connect to that energy? That's what we have to navigate. How do we tell if they're prophetic or they're not? Well, you will link up the synchronicities and the symbolisms happening in your walking life and then reflect on that dream and say, oh, I'm really trying to show myself something or, oh, I need therapy. Yeah, <laughs> it's always therapy. But this is the thing I've, I've thought about, too. Those times when you have that one dream and you're trying to figure out all the details and maybe we've discussed this already and I just probably with everything that you have told me I'm, I'm taking it all in but when people have dreams the re same repeated dream over and over again why is that because you're an overthinker and there's like an ocd up in that mind but it, could it <laughs> well there could be the obsessive compulsive disorder but could it also be that there's it's bigger well, it's showing you where Signs. your main blockages are okay. or where you're not satisfied in your path. Okay. Or like it's a sign is like trying to come to your, like God is trying to talk to you. I think that's right. where I'm trying to go. A lot of times, yeah, pe people that are more, I guess, um, advanced in looking at their dreams will yeah. know like, okay, my ancestors spirit energy, the universe is trying to show me something. Get a little black Panther mm -hmm. in there. And, mm -hmm. and you know, the common folk, 
they definitely get kind of caught up in, well, why, why is this happening if I haven't focused on this? And their subconscious is trying to lead them down to resolve those scenarios. Mm. Because a lot of times people will dream about their personal life or even their career life and the past. Those dreams are common. And it's, it's time for you to reflect on those, what you've learned from it and how to release it. Mm. That's like the message. So if you're dreaming of the same scenario in a, in a career yeah. dream, it's like, hey, reminding you, don't settle. Hey, don't settle. Hey, don't get comfortable. Don't settle. Okay. If you're dreaming of weird stuff in your relationship, it's like, okay, well, emotionally, how do I feel about my relationship? Where do I stand with the relationships that are around me? Mm-hmm. You have to like check yourself constantly after dreaming because they're coming from you for a reason, but what are you dealing with or what are you avoiding? Wow. See, see this is why I wanted to have this podcast because sometimes you, I mean, I'm an overthinker, overanalyzer. I've been like that my entire life, okay, which probably is the reason why I am where I am today. In certain ways, but in other ways, you've done a lot of improvement. Yeah, yeah. Who oh, because you are today you. is totally transformation of who you were a year ago. Because Sam came into my life and changed me. Okay, and that's that's the I just honest. Came in and talked, <laughs> but that's the honest to God truth. Listen, listen. You could spend years in therapy talking to a therapist, right? Spend all that money to go to it. And I'm not I'm not recommending everybody go to a psychic or, you know. Or you people, could just be friends with Sam. Right. You can be friends <laughs> with Sam, too. Because not, not everybody's going to go down that same road of, like, wanting to do that way. But your, your psychic abilities, being able to be in tune with what I was going through, has helped me heal and helped me grow. So it gave you validation that you needed. Right. To know that I'm not crazy. That's the number one way to heal someone is to validate their experience. Yeah. I, and I don't think a lot of and therapists conversation, that could be a whole nother thing. I love therapists. They do a great job. They don't get paid enough, but not all therapists are good therapists. Right. But that's a whole nother subject for another day. Um, I overthink, I overanalyze everything on everything, which is why I asked about the repeated dream. And I think where I was trying to go with this is that when you think about those repeated dreams, it's not common but I think a lot of us live with the same stretch, stressors in our life, which is love, life, and career. Right. So we overthink these things, which is why I ask about the repeated dream thing, because we all have gone through it. I guess the biggest thing is just trying to figure out how to come back that because, you know, changes happen in our lives all the time. It's not always going to be the same. Right. How do you get out of that cycle if you can't figure out what the symbolism is within that repeated dream well navigating those dreams and writing down all of the details that you remember and looking up all those details in a metaphysical way spiritual way Mm -hmm. like let's say you dreamt of you got this new job and then they put you in this room but you noticed that the room was turquoise Mm -hmm. and you don't know why Mm -hmm. and you're like i fucking i hated it it was mm. ugly. It yeah. was gross. Like, why was it painted that way? Mm. Well, that's because your mind is trying to tell you something that you're avoiding with that. Well, what does turquoise mean? Turquoise means education, learning. So a lot of times we plateau ourselves because we are afraid to take the next step because we're afraid of failure. Wow. So that dream, those repetitive dreams are like, hey, this is coming or this is something that's happening. But are you ready for this? Like, we're showing you this in a very subconscious way. But are, are you ready or are you still in your karmic cycle? Are you still in the lessons? Like, do you still have to repeat some patterns? Because it's, it's bringing you to be aware of what's the possibility of change. But we all have to understand that change in our life starts with one main thing, ourselves. And we that's have facts. To make, we have to make those changes. You made a lot of changes. You've been very patient. So now you're going to reap the benefits of that. It's just we have to understand as human beings that we're being shown something and time is man-made. So we can't constantly look at a time and say, well, it was supposed to happen at 12.02 on a Tuesday because <laughs> I felt like it should have. <laughs> you know, this is true. We this have to true. say, I believe in divine timing and I know that my force and my spirit is destined for better things than at this moment. And it'll come to me in this space when I'm ready. Hey. 
You said a word, and I think I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, I think we can't say nothing else to that. Divine timing. Exactly. Yeah, especially because Sam got to go handle some business. Okay, guys. Yes, I do. Yeah, <laughs> right on time, right? So we'll be back uh, with our next episode. We're going to take – I'll go take some – more time off a little bit. Sam needs to get settled. I'm going to Texas for a week, so we're going to be off for a week, and then I'll be back. Yes, yes, that's what's going to happen. And Unless then we do Zoom. We'll figure we'll figure it out. And mm-hmm. in the coming weeks, we'll actually uh, we'll let you guys know exactly how we're going to handle our podcast. Um, we're probably going to do Zoom and video. Well, I mean, like, the, just the breakdown of everything. Yeah. This is what happens when you work with a psychic. She know every damn thing over here. <laughs> From <laughs> top to bottom. I feel like we should put an itinerary, <laughs> right? Of dates and times of what we're doing. Yes. Yeah, so I just want to say thank you guys for sticking around um, and waiting for our episodes and all that good stuff. And put the audio up starting this week, or I'm sorry, next week. And um, yeah, message us. Tell us what you want to talk about. Mm-hmm. What topics you want. We're open to anything. Yes. I'm going to actually put all that information at the end of this episode of exactly where to email me and DM me if you want to uh, send your questions and all those things of that nature. Until next time, guys, we'll see you later. Peace out. (laughs) So a lot of New Mexicans have been faced with growing up in Hispanic families that are like children are seen and not heard. Mm -hmm. If you're going to cry, I'm going to give you something to cry about. And, And that's, that's very toxic to a child's mind because